And so, so next up, um, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Ant Antonio Gomez with uh, Paperfold, evaluating shape changes for viewport transformations in foldable thin film display devices. So if you'd like to welcome Antonio. Thanks for the introduction, Pete. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Antonio Gomes. I'm a PhD student at the Human Media Lab, Queen's University. Uh, and today, I'm here to present Paperfold. In this paper, we evaluated shape changes for viewport transformation in foldable thin film display devices. Now, I know a lot of you might be wondering, what the hell does that mean? Um, so in essence, Paperfold is a system that combines uh, the benefits of context-aware multi-display devices with paper-like interaction metaphors. And I would like to start by showing a brief video that demonstrates certain qualities of interacting with paper documents, which has inspired our design. Introducing the 2015 IKEA catalog. It's not a digital book or an e-book. It's a book book. The interface is 7.5 by 8 inches, but can expand to 15 by 8 inches. The navigation is based on tactile touch technology that you can actually feel. So for reasons of portability, uh, mobile devices have displays that are limited in size and constrained by weight. And despite increases in resolution, such size restrictions have resulted in sequential interaction paradigms in which applications are accessed uh, one by one. By contrast, paper offers richer forms of interaction, allowing documents to be navigated and organized more efficiently. The display size of paper documents can also be modulated easily through folding, tearing, or combining multiple page elements. Paper also allows concurrent access to multiple documents. Even when the documents are overlapping, we can easily retrieve information. Due to the thinness and lightweight of paper, documents can also be spatially arranged to provide users with simultaneous access to information. However, mimicking the affordances of paper documents in electronic devices poses significant challenges for interaction. Uh, due to the limitations in terms of portability and malleability. And while users conventionally carry multiple devices, such as tablets or smartphones, unlike paper documents, these are commonly used individually, depending on specific user needs. As such, the development of electronic devices that adopt certain qualities or metaphors of interacting with paper documents has been an enduring research goal. There's a body of work that um, explore rigid displays that can orient around one axis. However, the thickness and weight of each individual segment impacts the overall portability and malleability of such devices. To overcome this limitation, progress has been made towards developing computers made of flexible ink displays as thin and lightweight as paper. With Paperfold, we investigate how thin film, paper-like mobile devices might adopt dynamic modulation of screen real estate through folding and tearing techniques. Uh, while there has been research into folding displays into various form factors, most of the display technologies used in prior studies used either rigid display devices or paper mockups. Chen discussed an evil creator featuring two displays mounted on two separate slates that can be used side-by-side -side or detached configurations. Their design supported embodied navigation techniques like folding, fanning, or flipping. Codex featured a dual-screen tablet computer, which could be detached and rearranged into various form factors. Codex can be oriented in a variety of postures to support individual work, ambient display, or collaboration with another user. However, the rigidity and thick form factor of the displays used in these explorations pose real drawbacks in terms of portability and physical effort. Now, to overcome these limitations, a series of explorations featuring thin film displays have been proposed in recent years. Display stacks presented a system for physically interacting with digital information via stacks of thin film displays. Paper tab featured an environment in which multiple thin film displays work together through proximity sensing to mimic a physical paper desktop experience. There's also a body of work featuring foldable thin film designs. Fold Me 
Simulated thin film displays on the front and back sides of a foldable mock-up device along predefined hinges, suggesting improved manipulation of information for portable devices. Paddle, use projection to represent highly deformable mobile devices that can be transformed into various special purpose controls, suggesting benefits over touch interactions commonly used in mobile devices. While the design of Paperfold was greatly inspired by these explorations, we believe that building a prototype using real flexible displays is valuable due to their unique properties in terms of thinness, lightweight, and malleability. Additionally, to our knowledge, there has not been a systematic exploration of three-way folding in multi-display systems. To inform the design of Paperfold, we use the following design criteria. Use of folding to modulate screen size, thus allowing users to modulate the screen real estate of the device between folded and expanded shapes. Reconfigurability and tile geometry, to increase the number of form factors we propose the attachment and detachment in multiple sides of the display. Orientation takes on a different role, as reorienting paper fold may dramatically alter the affordances of a shape, as well as visibility of the information on the displays. Number and angle of tiles explores the trade-off between shape resolution and portability of a foldable mobile device. 3D shapes allow users to simulate certain known display shapes through th simple morphological mimicry. Uh, sharing of views allow for di different orientation of display segments that may cause them to be visible to the user, other users, or hidden altogether. And finally, matching shape changes to view operations as segments of paper full form building blocks that can be shaped into an application. We investigated the relative transformation between states as an interaction technique. And I will now show a brief video that demonstrates some of the features of our prototype. Shaping paper fold as an ultra notebook pops out a keyboard pane. Here we see a user searching for a building in New York on Google Maps. Flattening the map shows a larger view across three displays. Shaping the map into a convex sphere switches to 3D Google Earth view. Folding paper fold into the shape of the building picks up the 3D SketchUp model. So to investigate what would be the most functional shapes of a foldable device, we conducted a participatory design sessions in which uh, participants were presented with four 3D print tiles without displays. Each tile contained magnets that allowed participants to interconnect as well as hold shapes. Users were asked to create as they thought of as the most useful shape transformations for a two-display reconfigurable device. If we take the example of any standard tablet, for instance, if we consider this to be one display segment, what would happen if we had a second display segment? And we then repeated the exercise with uh, three and four displays. This image shows the 14 shapes derived from our participatory design session. Note that users did not like four display configurations, as folding a four segment device alters the shape geometry of the device in two concurrent dimensions, making it more difficult for users to handle. Additionally, for each shape, we ask participants to propose an associated functionality. Our findings show that most participants routinely carried multiple devices, such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops. However, they prefer to use a single device that could be shaped into various form factors, if this was possible. When asked what functionality the proposed shape changes might have in a device, participants almost exclusively re refer to view operations that are common in graphical user interfaces. And 12 view operations were proposed. I will now describe the design of our prototype. I won't go into too much detail in this. Um, the, the apparatus of the, the system was published at CHI last year, and a lot of detail is on that paper, but to give you an overview, uh, Paperfold is a foldable thin film device um, with each, in which ti each tile has a flexible uh, ink display attached to it, um, and a flexible 3D printed substrate with embedded sensors that allow the system to determine the orientation and connection of each individual segment. Each segment measures 15 by 10 centimeters with a thickness of 1.25 millimeters. Uh, note that the increased thickness um, at the extremities of the tile is only a function of the required size of the magnetic hinges that allow paper fold tiles to be attached in a variety of configurations. In a subsequent user study, we asked participants to rank each of the 12 view operations derived from the participatory design session. This short segment highlights some of these view operations. 
increasing the size of the window and revealing more of a map demonstrates the collated view. Zooming can be demonstrated by zooming in and out of a map without changing the window size. And 3D views can be demonstrated by displaying graphics in a non-flat configuration. Additional operations were demonstrated by showing a keyboard, a toolbar, a phone keypad, distinct applications in each display, or an empty window. For each shape change, participants ranked each of the 12 view operations for appropriateness with each shape. All shapes were repeated for each of two scenarios, a text editor and a Google Map application. We based our, cho our choice of applications on prior studies as well as the results of our participatory study that showed a, user, a strong user preference for these scenarios. Due to the exhaustive nature of possible comparisons, we examined standard deviations as an indication of user agreement. Portrait extensions were strongly associated with the collate operation. For horizontal extension, participants prefer show thumbnails as an alternative for the text application. <coughs> Sorry. While well, full screen was suggested as an alternative for the map application. For detaching displays, duplicate screen was preferred for the text application, while showing different application had the strongest rating for the map scenario. There was a weak association with folding the display into a perpendicular shape as pertaining to collate in the text application. However, there was a strong preference for showing keyboard for the map scenario. For both applications, Folding displays into a triangular shape was associated with duplicate screen. Bending three displays inwards or outwards was much more highly ranked with zooming operations in the map application. Observations confirmed that in the text editor scenario, participants had difficulty rel relating to any 3D operations due to the inherent to the nature of the data element. For vertical extensions in landscape orientations, Collate was consistently the highest ranked operation. There was also a clear association between folding, the display into a perpendicular shape, and show keyboard in both scenarios. Folding displays into a triangular shape was associated with duplicate screen. Show 3D view was associated with folding the device into a 3D hull. For the triangular hull configuration, duplicate screen was the highest ranked operation for the text application, while for the map application, there was a cl clear association with showing a 3D view. To summarize some of the obtained results, we can observe the following example scenarios. On the top left, we can observe an alternate notebook form factor using three displays. On the center, we can see that flattening three displays extends content across extra screen real estate. On the right, we can see that detachable screens configurations allow for a multitude of form factors. On the bottom left, we can observe a convex shape rendering a Google Earth view. On the center, we can see a 3D shape rendering a Google SketchUp model. And finally, on the bottom right, a third detachable display is used as a toolbar. Overall, participants liked having the ability to dynamically alter viewports. There were benefits identified for using Paperfold as a multitasking system. While browsing through maps, users were particularly impressed with the 3D view features of our system. Additional benefits included adding peripherals, thumbnails, toolbars, or using Paperfold as means for distributing information by physically detaching and sharing panels. We derived the following design recommendations for the design of segmented, foldable, multi-display devices. Automated view operations appear to work well as responses, responses to folding, attaching, or detaching displays. Consider collate operations when users extend the first display with a second display. Consider alternative views such as keyboards, toolbars, or different applications when extending a second display with a third display. Provide mechanisms for users to choose view operations, functions, or allow them to set preferences. Consider showing a keyboard on the lowest display when the device is folding, folded into a perpendicular shape. Consider mirroring the displays when the device is folded into a triangular shape. And finally, consider showing a 3D view when users bend displays inwards, outwards, or into a 3D hull shape. To summarize, we evaluated Paperfold, a mobile device with flexible display segments that can be folded into arbitrary configurations. Our design was informed by a participatory design session that resulted in 14 preferred shape transformations. A subsequent study investigated 
The effectiveness of shape changes for viewport transformations. Results indicate that participants were generally able to select specific view operations as automated responses to folding, attaching, or detaching displays. User feedback from our study indicates benefits from having multiple detachable displays. Advantages include better support for perfor performing tasks that traditionally require multiple devices, as well as physical manipulations and turnings of views. Thank you for listening to this talk, and I'm now ready for questions. So, a couple of questions. A couple of questions down here. Hmm? Um, yeah. Might just be a... Okay, mm -hmm. ready, ready for questions? Yeah. Okay, so first question, please. Yeah. I think this is really exciting work to push the envelope. How, to what extent, the company of display can do it? If I understand correctly, display can represent document, special photo, or viewing windows, or attached to the like, keyboard. And, uh, but also, obviously, like a collocated or remote collaboration, L shape has a lot of meanings. Also, collocate, you can see backside and this side. So maybe CSCW seems definitely your expert domain, but could be expand application. But my question is a bit meta. And uh, folding, shape changing, display is great. But fundamentally, behind display, the information, still information of pixels, basically. Do you have any kind of vision towards? How you really get into the more micro granity display? Then display and the information are not distinguishable anymore. Does it make sense? Uh, I had a little trouble understanding. Uh, basically, the, the in the, the display, you see the, the GUI world, GUI empire, pixels, all the uh, stuff. But once you're making uh, what you call display, hold on, hold on. more finer granity, very tiny more reconfigurable using many degrees of the freedom, then you can really sculpt information building, not just the three windows, but the building itself can be modeled. So that's a really interesting uh, radical jump of the concept. There, there's definitely a trade-off between uh, the shape configurations that we were able to ascertain with the, with the limited number of displays that we have and uh, the resolution of the graphical user interface. And there's definitely a lot of work to be done there. Uh, we were interested in uh, trying to ascertain whether there was a clear association with specific shapes for specific applications, in which case we have. Uh, there are shapes that user will pertain uh, as to sharing of views. As you mentioned, uh, if we share one display to the back, um, it's no longer a private display, right? Yes. And now how do we distinguish whether that will be, um, you know, you're willingly sharing information with someone else, or would you simply be exposing whatever content is on the first yeah. display uh, to the general public? Um, I think a paper display is a very strong metaphor, but instead of paper, if you can think about clay or sand, then it's open to new possibility. So just to, to briefly answer the other part, um, so <clears throat> I think I agree with you. It'd be nice if we could just have 3D pixels that were like Playtronics or something, but that would require some kind of 4D printing technique that we don't really have yet. Um, I think it's very hard to do, and I think this is more in the ca ca category of um, <clears throat> paper computers and document-based systems, um, which, which you know, are, are flat, essentially, but still flexible in terms of form configuration. So it's a slightly different category of systems, I think. Hi, John Tong from Microsoft Research. So Hiroshi, I think, started asking this question, but I wondered whether in the participatory design sessions, whether the users were primed to think about uh, meaning um, differently, whether this was whether they were individuals or whether they were with someone else. So for some of those motions may mean different things if I'm alone versus with other people, and whether, you, whether they said anything about that. And that's a very good question, and um, well, to answer it, we, we conducted individual uh, participatory design ses the sessions. Uh, we did not evaluate um, this subset of shape transformations in a public scenario, but you're absolutely right. It might have a very different meaning uh, once you have someone sitting in front of you, because then you're willingly sharing um, the information that's present on your displays, whereas it's something that you may not as easily envision uh, if you're alone. It's a very good question. Yeah. That's a very good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Do we have a bit of time? No? Okay, well, th thanks again for a very good If you can, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Cheers.